in Psalm chapter 95, uh, let us begin to read. We're going to start reading at verse number one. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. The sheep of his hand, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, and proved me, and saw all of my work, 40 years long, look at verse 10, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into uh, my rest. Um, I want to preach from the subject today, lesson number one, knowing his ways. Just, just simply knowing, knowing his ways. I have to start this way. Um, I grew up in church. Had to go. Um, was, was not an option. Um, but to me, and, and I went to a Methodist church, um, and I, one reason I love the church is we, we started at 11, and we was out by 12. I love that pastor <laughs> at that church. But it was about religion. It was about uh, rituals. We had to stand up at a certain time. We had to sing certain hymns, took up the offering. It was an offering song. Uh, and I, boy, I, could, I knew all that. When it was a, a communion, how to go up there. As these go, let others come. You know, uh, I knew what line I had to be in. You know, they, the first people that went were like the ministers, or the, the, we call them stewards. And uh, then the, the, the children came last. And so I knew when to, when to get up and go up there when it was my turn. Knew all of that. But I did not know God's ways. And because I did not know his ways, some things happened to me. Um, and I believe that one of the reasons that God has given me this message so strong uh, is because we have people that go through the motions. All right, all right, all right. Because you really don't know his ways. I think this is so important that it, that it made scripture. He says, for 40 years, look at verse 10, I was grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my way. So if they didn't know his ways, it means that God wanted them to know. Yes. Amen. He wanted them to know his ways. Amen. And so you can't know your church doctrine better than you know him. Amen. You, you can't know the denomination better than you know him. Amen. He wants you to know his ways. And so I think one of the first things we have to do is we have to define 
Pastor, what are, what is, what is, what are ways? Uh, ways come from the Greek word, uh, or the Hebrew word, rather, uh, derrick. And um, it's, it's, we have a derrick in our congregation. So, Derek, your name literally means uh, moral character. Um, it means uh, the manner that, that you carry yourself in. Um, do y'all remember growing up and um, some people, your parents wouldn't let you hang with because they didn't have good manners? <laughs> so, so, so when we say the ways of God, we're talking about his manners, his mannerisms, right? Uh, we're also talking about a path or a road, uh, which is interesting because as I was studying this, and I, I promise you it's going to make sense to you in a minute. And so go to Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew 7. Have you heard this before? Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, let's look at verse number uh, 13. It says, enter ye in where? At the straight gate. For wide is the way, or wide rather is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in that way. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and there be few that find it. So really, when we're talking, when Jesus was talking about this, he was saying, the way into my kingdom is straight and it's narrow. Because that's God's way. God doesn't have many paths. I heard somebody say, there are many paths to God. Jesus says, I am the way. Not one of many ways. I am the way. And so, so, so <laughs> I, I want to show you an illustration. Because sometimes what we do is we try to get into, into, the, into the gate like this. But, but you ain't going to fit in here. And I already know. I can hear y'all now. Pastor, I, all I have to do is I'm, I'm going to turn to the side and slide on in there. But, but what you all don't understand, this don't fit in there. This, this ain't going to fit in there. You got to let that go. You, you got to, that, that's why Paul says, I can't, naked I came into the world. Naked I'm going to leave. I did not bring anything in here so I can't take anything out. And so I've got to let go of all of my stuff, all of my junk, if I'm going to find and walk in the ways of God. It's straight and it's narrow. And so that's why when Christians backslide, uh, you don't backslide like this. You backslide like that. I mean, you were here, but now you, I mean, you, you, you back all, you slid all the way back because the road is straight and it's narrow. That's the way. So these are God's ways. And so I had to learn and I had to understand uh, I can't do it my way. Amen. Now, now watch this. Uh, when you don't know God's ways, there are a lot of things that happen to you. Let, let me give you uh, some examples. Uh, one thing that happens is you don't grow. Because you run from places that God sent you to. And when, when somebody rubs you the wrong way, rather than growing through it, you run from it. And you blame the devil 
when God sent you there to grow. He sent you there to learn. But when I don't know his way, I'll blame God for things or, or Satan for things that God is doing to perfect me. Joseph was sent to uh, Potiphar's house and, and, and into slavery because he needed to grow. And the devil didn't do that. But if you don't know his way, you'll blame, you'll blame the devil for things God's doing in your life in order for you to grow. And you'll run from places that God sent you to. And in the church, I got to pastor my church. In the church, I, I've got to stop being offended by everything that everybody does. At some point, maybe I'm supposed to grow right here. And we've got to stop confusing discipline with offense. That this is, this is love that's coming your way. And so what God is saying, I'm, listen, I got you in the right place. All I need you to do is stay there until I finish my work that I'm doing in you. And I'm going to send people around you that you don't like, that you don't get along with. That's going to be good for you because you've got to stop only hanging with people just like you. You need some other folk around you that ain't like you. When I don't know his ways, I run from a place of blessing. God sent you there to bless you. And God knows the kind of folk that he's sending you around. I, I, I heard somebody say, Pastor, I know God don't want me to go through this. How do you know that? How do you know that? And so I got to find another church because I know you don't know God's way. You're running from the very place that God's going to bless you at. And you ran away from a blessing. Look at Job. Job thought, listen, he thought, he thought God was punishing him. And, and God was not punishing him. God was blessing him because there was something in the heart of Job that needed to come out. Job stayed there until the tide turned. One of, one of, one of the things that helped me the most in my personal walk with the Lord is learning this lesson. I was a runner. Then I ain't got the food with me. It's to me, it's out of sight, out of mind. And, and when I don't see you, I don't think about you. You know what I'm saying? And so that was peace for me. But I never would have grown. I never would have learned. I, I, never, I never would have understood and appreciated God running from everything that I did not like. Ministry ain't supposed to be comfortable. And it was prophesied, Pastor 2024, this is the time. This is the time. The time is now. But it ain't up to you. It's going to be up to us. And so how are we going to grow, how, how are we going to uh, expand if we can't get along with each other? If we're still finding fault over small things that don't, that don't matter to God. I, I just got a pastor just for a minute right here because in the name of Jesus, I'm running out every gossiper. 
every backstabber, every spirit of hatred and jealousy and envy, every divisive spirit, every Jezebel spirit. And let me say, Jezebel spirit ain't just female. You can't have a Jezebel without an Ahab. And so we got to run all of that out so that God can now do everything that he wants done in and through us. <laughs> and so, can we say no in his way? And so they got in trouble. They didn't get in, they didn't go into the promised land uh, because uh, they did not know his ways. But the Bible says Moses uh, knew his ways. They just knew his acts. And church, I want to I wanna know the ways of God. One, another thing that it helps me do, it, it, it helps me uh, understand what's God and what's not God. You can't come up to me and tell me anything. I'm a nice guy. A lot of people don't know I'm, pa I'm a pastor, uh, you know, that I meet on the street. And you just, you, you can't just tell me anything and then say that was God. When I know his ways, I know that that wasn't God. And, and folk will come and they'll blame, listen, they'll bring God in things that God don't have nothing to do with. You just got, listen, you got a bad attitude. Don't, don't be blaming God for that. See, <laughs> all right, let me say it this way. When, 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 when you know his ways, you also know what not to do. I'm broke, but I know not to rob a man. Because... <laughs> Because I know his way. <laughs> I mean, so, so when you know his way, there are things that you know not to do. Are y'all all right? Okay. So, for the rest of the way, I'm going to just really give you one point today. Because that's, that's really all we can handle today is one point. But before we get to the one point, there are some things that we have to know about God first. There are some things that we have to know about God first. It's not, this, this message ain't going ain't gonna to work if you miss these five statements. Amen. Number one, God is eternal. Amen. God is uh, eternal. Um, you got to know that. And, I, and I'm talking to a generation that believes that there are other alternatives and other options that also believe that there is nothing that's absolute. And so you have to understand God is uh, eternal. Um, he declares the end from the beginning. Uh, go to Psalm chapter 9, and I'm going to go pretty fast here, and so I'm going to just give you scriptures, but I want, to, I want to read this one. Psalm chapter 9, and when you get there, say, uh, say amen. Uh, watch this. Uh, 90, 9 zero. Psalm chapter 9, 0. Lord, verse 1, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou, uh, or before you have formed the, the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are you are God. And so, ever eternal means that He declares the end from the beginning. Another way we can say He's the Ancient of Days. The, another way you can say He's it's, it's unbroken age. In other words, God doesn't have an end and he don't have a beginning. Are we all right with that? Number two, God is sovereign. I must know that God is sovereign. Now, let me give you the definition of sovereign. He has absolute 
power that cannot be checked by anyone or anything. So God is sovereign, okay? He doesn't get voted in. That's why it does not matter how popular you think he is. He's sovereign whether you believe him or not, whether you serve him or not, whether you follow him or not. God is sovereign. Number three, God is omniscient. He is omniscient. So God knows all. There's nothing that God does not know. Are we all right? Number four, God is omnipresent. This is awesome. He's everywhere at the same time. <laughs> God is omnipresent. Uh, go to, you're in Psalm, go to Psalm 139. We got to see this one. Some, some of them I just got to prove, especially to my young folks. Psalm chapter number 139, verse 1. Oh, Lord, you have searched me. And you have known me. You know my downsitting. You know my uprising. You understand my thoughts from afar off. God, you know what I was going to think before I thought it. All right, bring it into perspective. How many folk are glad? How many married people do I have? How, how, many, how many married folk are glad? that your wife don't know your thoughts <laughs> or your husband don't know your thoughts from afar off. Come on, let's make it plain. So, <laughs> so, so God knows our thoughts even before we think it. That, that's, listen, this is omniscient. And so he says, you can pass my path my lying down, you're acquainted with all my ways. There's not a word in my tongue, but Lord, you know it all together. You knew I was going to say it. And by the way, let's, let's stop being so shamed because we thank God shocked. You shocked. You can't believe you let it happen again. But he already knew. Be he knew before he called you. He knew everything you was going to do, say, and think before he anointed you. So, so, so let's, let's stop allowing, let's stop, let's stop allowing the enemy to bring that on us. He says, <laughs> you beset me before and behind. You lay your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for, for me, verse 6. It is high, I cannot attain to it. Where, look at verse 7. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where can I go? Where shall I run from your presence? Anybody been running from the Lord? You got caught, didn't you? Because... <laughs> Because where you're running to, he's already there. He beat you there. <laughs> he says, if I ascend to heaven, verse 8, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning, dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Now, this was me in verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. In other words, y'all remember, well, I can't remember the name of the group now, but the creeps come out at night. Creeps come out at night. Creeps come out at night. Oh, the freaks come out. That's what it was. That was, uh, who was that? Who? Who did it? What kind of church do I have? <laughs> Some of y'all remember that. Dun -dun 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 well, but <laughs> but we thought we thought we thought we were getting away 
because we under the cover of darkness. Because nobody is seeing. Because I'm in the dark. But God is saying, when you in the dark, it's light to me. It's all the same to me. So where, where you think you're getting away, I'm sitting right there with you. He said, yea, the darkness hides not from you. The night shines just like it's day. Darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you have possessed my reins. You have covered me in my mother's womb. womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul uh, knows, knows right right well. So God is, is everywhere at the same time. So he's omnipresent. Church, you got to know that. See, you got to know these things. And then, then number five, the last one, um, uh, as they said today, uh, this ain't point number last, though, but this is the last, this, this statement number last. Uh, God is omni omnipotent, okay? And so this means uh, he has all power or all authority, really is a better word. He has all authority and power. That's what he had. So, so there's, there's, he's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. One, one of, uh, and I don't, I'm not going to read it today because I just don't have time, but Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Nebuchadnezzar was, he was the king of Babylon. A tremendous kingdom. As a matter of fact, the only kingdoms that you really are named that to be great kingdoms uh, was the Babylonian, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, yeah, the kingdom of Babylon, uh, the kingdom of the Medo-Persians, and then the kingdom of Rome. And that was the big, the statue that he saw. And so one, the, 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 the Babylonians, that was his, that his head was the gold head. And then silver, and then you had silver, and then you had iron, and then you had clay and bronze for the feet. And so here's this statue that, that, that is showing the kingdoms that God is, is going to judge. And what I love is, in the dream, Nebuchadnezzar saw the statue being destroyed. But you would have thought that, that the Lord would have went for the head. But he destroyed it from the feet. And so what he saw, he saw... <laughs> He, he saw something coming out of a mountain like a stone that was being cut out of a mountain but without a hand. And so when, when, when that stone came out of the mountain, it, it hit the statue and all those kingdoms fell. And, and Daniel had to tell him that the stone that you saw, uh, that was the Ancient of Days. See, he's a king. You're a king, but he's a king of kings. <laughs> and, and, so, and so what he's showing you is that there's only one kingdom that's going to stand. I don't, hear, I don't care how great your kingdom is, there's only one that's going to stand at the last day. And so the one that has our power, that's the one that's going to stand. And that's the one that we're headed to. But church, we need to know his ways. We've got to teach our children God's ways. We, we've got to teach our co-workers God's ways. We've got to understand his ways. We can't understand his ways if we don't know it. i got to know that he's all that. So, so watch this. So when somebody challenges my faith, because I know him, and I know his ways, I don't care what evidence you come up with. Because there's some things that I know. And so now for the next thing that I want you to write, just write this on your, on your uh, taking notes. We need to know semicolon. Not semicolon, I actually coat. We need to know coat. Thank you. Uh, help me. 
So we need to know colon. And so, Pastor, uh, what do we need to know? So can y'all listen for four minutes and 16 seconds? Uh, so we need to know, number one, his way is right. His way is right. This is, yeah, period. Um, now, y'all in Psalms, go, go to Proverbs, because here's what gets us in trouble. <laughs> Proverbs, uh, we're going to start in chapter uh, 14, and we're going to read about three of them. Proverbs chapter 14, uh, when we get there, say, uh, amen. amen. This is what gets us in trouble, especially my men. Where are my men at? Look at verse 12. There is a way. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Church, I have been on this way so many times. It just seemed right. I mean, I, we've even gotten lost, and my wife over there mad as she can be. Because I didn't listen when she said, this was before, you know, GPS and all that. You had to pull over and stop and ask somebody for direction. And, you know, go north. I ain't no go north guy. You know, I don't know north. So you go south and then hang, you know, go east on this road. You tell me to go up to the gas station and hang a left, then I got you. You know what I'm saying? You get by Piggly Wiggly, then you're going to take that first right. That, that's, those are the kind of directions I need. And so, so, so I'm getting us lost all the time because it just seemed right. <laughs> One of our problems, we just, we just got a whole lot of, whole lot of pride. And we don't want to listen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Go, go over to chapter 16. Let's see, let's see it again. Um, uh, look at verse 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And then go to, go to 21. I didn't, that's why I didn't want to start with 21. Uh, I wanted to finish with 21 because I just feel, felt like y'all could swallow this better. Uh, Proverbs 21, uh, verse number uh, 2, says, Every way of man is right. In his own eye. Amen. I mean, see, I had to, I had to repent so many times. Be because I knew, I just knew I was right. But see, that's my way. That's my way. Listen to me. God can really help you if you stop being so defensive. You're stuck on you. So you're, you're, you're so stuck on yourself that God can't help you grow because I'm defensive. I look at it as defense, and I think I'm right. But that's in your own eyes. And so, listen, his way is always right. So his way is always right, and so I'm going to give you an A, B, and C. Uh, and so under his way is always right, I want you to say he had to make us right. See, we ain't right. There's nobody in here that's quote, unquote, right. He made us right. We had to be made right. There is none righteous. No, not what? One. 
And so, so, so Jesus made us right, and he had to do that. And if y'all were any, any of you were on the uh, prayer calls that we were doing, we, we had a right to come into the Holy of Holies because of Jesus. Number two, our letter B, um, he made a covenant with us. And so, Pastor, what does that mean? A covenant is a legal term. It's like a, it's like a testament, re really the same word. And so if you had a will, that's a legal document. Is that correct? And so what God did, God made a covenant with Abraham. And he said, I'm going to make a covenant with you. And, and, and what's so great about this is when he makes a covenant, that's a promise. And then the covenant is cut in blood. So what he's doing, he's letting you know that when I make a covenant with you, I'm not going to tell you something that's going to be wrong. When, when I make a covenant with you, the promises that I have made to you, you can count on. Because we got a covenant. See, this is what we have over the devil. He don't have a covenant. But, but we got a covenant that has been cut in the blood of Jesus. And so in, with the blood of the Lamb, now I'm in, I'm in covenant relationship with the Lord. And so, so, so now we are legally bound together. This thing, it ain't just spirit. We are legally bound. And then your, your letter C, and I'm going to close uh, here. Um, and I want to finish the rest of my time right here. Um, he plays the long game. He plays the long game. Pastor, what is the long game? Um, the long game is Joseph being favored by his dad, being jealous, have his brothers jealous of him, throwing him into a pit. He was 17. They find him in a pit, sell him into slavery, then he goes into Potiphar's house, who Potiphar bought him, and he served in Potiphar's house as a slave, and he hadn't done nothing wrong. Right, right. And you say, God, there's no way you ought to be doing an innocent man like this because he hadn't done anything wrong. And God is saying, you're playing the short game. What you don't understand, I'm playing the long game because I made a covenant. I made a covenant with Abraham. And this is a descendant of Abraham. And so in order to save Abraham Isaac and Jacob and the covenant that I have made, he's got 12 sons. And the, 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 the 11 trying to kill the 12th one. I made a promise to Abraham that all 12 of us were going to make it. So I got to get the one they trying to kill out the way. Because I'm not playing the short game, I'm playing the long game. And if you really know the ways of God, his long game is going to bless you even when you're trying to stay in the way of what God is doing. And so God had to get him out of the way uh, for, for his promise, but also for their good. You about to kill the man that's going to bless you and take care of you. See, I play the long game. See, my way is always right. You, you can get upset. You can complain. But listen, it's right. 
because I'm playing. The longer. What, one of our problems is we play the short game. I found a church home. God, God sent me to a church. Oh, I love the pastor. Oh, I love the first lady. I love the praise team. But as soon as somebody rub you the wrong way, as soon as you get challenged because you need to be disciplined, as soon as he calls out sin and you comfortable sinning and don't want to stop, now I got to find another church that's going to make me comfortable in my sin. But what you have done, you have moved out of the place of blessing. God's not trying to punish you. God wants to bless you. God wants to raise you up. God doesn't send people into the world to punish them. He sends them into the world to bless them so that their lives can bless others, so that he can get the glory. But sometimes he got to take us around the way in order to get there because our head is so hard and our hearts are so hard. And so what he has to do is get all of that heart out of you. We run from the place that God has the long game. It's already in motion. And you know God sent you. Why would you get around wrong people anyway? Why, why would you allow people to rub off on you that can't spell Jesus? Ain't never prayed, and they didn't fast, they don't pray, don't, they have come to church, and why would you be running around allowing them to pull you out of the place that God sent you to get blessed? Nobody came in here perfect. Something wrong with all of us. We need the Holy Ghost. God plays. He plays the long game. They were trying to kill him. God was going to use him to bless him because he had a cup. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go to Hebrews. Go, go to Hebrews. Uh, chapter number two. See, see, when you play the long game, um, you won't uh, sweat the small stuff. Let, let me, can I, can I just, can I, do, can I do a free marriage retreat just for the next two minutes? <laughs> okay. The pastor says, or whoever's officiating the, the wedding, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Now, last time I checked, woman is grown, and a man is grown. Can't be called a woman unless you're an adult. Can't be called a man unless you no. Then say, who gives this little girl? Who, who gives this boy? Say, who gives this woman to be married to this man? So marriage is for grown folks. And so why are we still acting? Y'all finish it before I can do it. Why are we still acting like children? You can't make me do nothing. How you going to, when you make a grown person do something, that's called a slave. That's called bondage. I can make my children do something because they're children. Oh, you going to school today. Yes, you are. Oh, you going to church. Oh, yes, you are. How you going to make a grown person do 
something they don't want to do. So now, if, if they, so, so, let me help you. If they don't want to go, you go by yourself. Leave them alone. And pray in the spirit the whole way you're going. You don't know God can touch and change their heart. But you can't make somebody do something. Not no grown person. This ain't in my notes. Now, <laughs> so if she the one and he the one, then the long game says it's okay if he leave his socks on the floor. It's okay because I'm playing the long game. That's a small thing. We can work on that. There's no need to get a divorce and, and fall out over socks on the floor. If you can't, listen, if she can't cook, you figure out how to hook up you a good meal and include her in it too. Ain't no need in falling out. <laughs> Y'all playing the short game. I'm going to give you a real example of playing a long game. Um, when, and, and this, this when, when, I, when I drive by myself, and I'm the only one in the car, uh, I, take, I, take, I take liberties that I wouldn't take. Uh, <laughs> when other people in the car. Uh, but when I have my wife, and when I have my children, my sister-in-law, y'all, she always in there. And uh, but it's a good thing. It's it's a good thing. Is she teaching today? She ain't in here. Is okay. She didn't. Don't tell her what I said. And then, and 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 sometimes my sons, my children will bring their friends with them. Hmm. And my grandson, uh, Kaiser. And so when, when they're in the car with me, I take no liberties. Because, you know, if I'm going I'm to take my time, I'm going to drive very defensively. Because the long game says, especially, you know, with my children and my grandchildren, uh, I don't know, I don't know who I have in the car. And I ain't just talking about them. I don't know who's in them. Are y'all listening to me? And so I don't, I don't play with that. Because in my mind, I'm playing the long game. And now they will, they complain, everybody passing us, let them pass. You know, why, why are we going so slow? Don't worry about it. I'm playing the long game. Did you get there? You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, that's because they fuss at me that I drive too slow. I put it on the speed limit, I just crew it. Y'all fly on by me all you want to. I'm playing the long game. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? So God plays the long game. Did y'all find Hebrews? This is where we're going to start. Hebrews chapter 12. Did I say 11? He Hebrews chapter 12. This is where we're going. This church here, I'm telling you. I tell you what. Hebrews chapter 12. And you could, you, you could 11 is great too. But look at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside what? Every weight, seeing which so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2 is this. Looking unto who? Jesus. Who is he? The and the what? The author and finisher of our faith. So when you author something, when you finish it, you wrote the book. Right? You, 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 you came up with it, then you wrote it, and then you finished it. So, so we in the book. He talking about us right now. But watch what he says. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down where? 
at the right hand of the throne of God. So, long game. Um, Peter, you're going to deny that you know. I'm not going to fall out with you. Talking to playing the long game. Judas, uh, you're going you're gonna to betray me. But I'm not going to fall out with you because playing the long game. Um, my boys, y'all said y'all had my back. As a matter of fact, Peter, you even said, everybody going to deny you. But I'm not going to, I got your back. Come on, somebody. Y'all better hear this. So your boys who say they got your back, and then when it's time for them to have your back, all of them have scattered. You can't fall out with them because you're playing the long game. You don't treat people the way they treat you because you're playing the long game. And so y'all, y'all have scattered, and I've got to now depend on the women because the men have run away. <laughs> but I'm not going to fall out with the men because I'm playing, playing the long game. This, this gets me probably more than anything because I just read, we just said all these things that Jesus, that God is. Um, if, if he's all-knowing, and he is, then he, when the tree started growing, that he was going to be crucified on. He he saw the tree, yeah. and he, he had probably many opportunities yeah. to go and cut that tree down yeah. because I know what's coming, yeah. but he was playing the long game. The soldiers who whipped him with that uh, whip, yeah. when they came out of their mother's womb and they were a little baby and everybody was happy, he knew that this is the guy that's going to hit me with the, with the strap. But because I'm playing the long game, I'm not going to do anything but let him grow up. Come on, somebody. I mean, this is, this is amazing to me. He knew all of those pieces were in place, and he could have come, he could have got in the way and disrupted it. But what he said, I'm playing the long game because I know one day for the joy that was set before me, one day everybody going to be redeemed. One day everybody going to be healed. One day every family's going to be reconciled. One day you're going to see grandma. One day you're going to see grandpa. We're going to all be together because now I'm playing the long game. And in church, we play the short game to our demise. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Can we thank God for the word of God today?